What's up guys, it's Rake here with Pirate Attacking. I had someone on the forum ask how to do an external pattern scan, and I couldn't find any source code to give them, so I said I better just write one, and so that's what I did, so now I'm going to present that to you guys in a video. I want to say, first off, thank you to all of our donators. We received a lot of donations the past three months, which is really fantastic. I also want to mention that we do have a Patreon now. Um, so that just gives you guys another way to contribute. So I hope uh, people will take advantage of that. But let's just get started with this pattern scan. Uh, we're making an external hack. We're going to read process memory and we're going to compare it against a pattern that, uh, that we found using Cheat Engine. So let's just get started with that. Again, we're going to use a salt cube. You guys should know how to find the health address already. If you don't, you can follow a Solaris tutorial on that. So there's our health. Let's right click on it, find out what writes to this address, and we'll click right there. And we want to attach the debugger, and we want to do find what writes to the address pointed at by this pointer. Uh, we got to play that game we always play where we uh, grab a grenade and hope that we hit ourselves with it. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, you can see these first two instructions here. Those were just from me respawning the game, so just ignore those. And we can see we've pulled up uh, one instruction that's going to edit our health. Uh, it's going to subtract EDI from uh, whatever's in EBX plus 4. So let's click show to the disassembler here, and we see that instruction. So let's right-click it, and let's go to uh, replace, replace with code that does nothing. So we're going to see one, two, three nops there, okay? And now let's try to hurt ourselves again and our health should not go down, correct? All right, so yeah, it did not go down. That. So there's the original code. Uh, there are three bytes here, and there's two. There's a two-byte instruction here that moves EDI into e EDX. So um, I think this is CDECL, right? CDECL calling convention. It's the end of the function, right? We're popping the um, arguments back off the stack into the register we are resetting the stack frame and then we are returning so that's the end of a, a cdecl function i'm pretty sure so the, what i do see is that move edi into e, eax so return values are returned in the eax register uh, in this calling convention um you know now i mentioned i think uh, staring at calls the same but anyways um they're taking the amount of health that we're reducing our health by. The amount of damage is getting us returned into EAX. And I want, I don't know what that function is, but I want to trick that function into, into thinking that our health got reduced by zero. So not only are we going to nap, nap uh, this instruction, we are also going to nap the second instruction. So if we look at this, this if you don't already know, this opcode, the disassembler takes the bytes right here and it turns them into these opcodes, you know, based on the uh, on the process you have. Um, obviously, dark byte has like a whole database written for this. So uh, one, two, three bytes for that instruction and two bytes for that instruction for a total of five. So that's what we want to do. Now, if you have... Um, Basically, we want this pattern, 29.7b048bc7. So we can go, um, let's move this, and let's go right here, and let's do a scan for that array of bytes. So we're setting it to hex, we're setting it to array of byte, and we're going to try 29.7b048bc7. And let's do first scan. And we didn't find anything. Now, the reason for that is because um, it's only scanning for writable memory. We want to gray that out so it doesn't care what kind of memory it is. It's going to scan all of it. And so the reason for that is that the execute it's executable memory. It's not read readable or writable. The operating system you know, sets that area of memory. It sets those pages to have uh, permissions of not being able to read it or write it. That's kind of a – that's just the built-in – um, security protection that's built into the operating system. And all the patterns you're going to be making, 99% of them are going to be for code because data is just too transient. The data changes too often, um, and the code does not um, for the most part. Now, where code does change is uh, – let's just take a look right here. Um, for instance um, – 
like a hard-coded uh, immediate operand like this, like an address. Now, that will almost always be the same, but if you're using a game that's dynamically allocating memory and dynamically putting uh, code in there, then that can change, especially with a virtual machine. Um, when you take bytecode and you send it through uh, an interpreter, you know, it may be taking addresses that have been re relocated and be calculating new um, offsets and addresses in the code that's going to be placed into memory. So that's where you can get into trouble. Now, the way to get around this is by using wildcards. And so uh, immediate operands like this won't exist um, in, a good, um, in a good signature. So I have a uh, cheat engine a sig maker a plugin uh, right so you go you right click and go to generate signature click on that uh, you can do an IDA style or a code style um, we're just gonna do a regular code style alright so um, basically it's it's a byte array and then it's a a mask so you can see right here it already zeroed out those four um, bytes and put them as wildcards in the mask. So that worked properly. Um, that's exactly how it should work when you have a good uh, SIG maker. So let's go down to the actual address we are working on and let's uh, generate a signature for that and click yes. And then let's uh, paste that in here. So it created one wildcard for us. And if we look here, that wildcard is going to be the 04 because that 04 is a, um, it's like a hard coded. I don't know how to say it, an immediate operand or a literal. So that is what you want to make wildcards for. So we're looking at this pattern and the mask. We want to create a function that can take these exact um, strings, right, and can find a pattern based on that. So let's um, step out of Cheat Engine here, and let's go to Visual Studio and start up a new project. So we're going to make a Win32 console application. We are going to call this um, Pattern Scan EX Tutorial. Click Next. And we want it to be a console application. Uh, I don't care for the pre-compiled header. I like an empty project. That way I can customize it exactly how I want it and click Finish. Now we are going to have um, a you know, a main source file, and then we're going to have a few families of functions. Uh, one is going to be like Fleep's hack process. One is going to be uh, patternscan.h and uh, memhack.h, and I think that's it. So to get started nice and fast doing that, I just like to right-click um, on the project and go to Open Folder and File Explorer, and then I create a new uh, text document, and uh, we, I know I'm making uh, seven of these, so... And so I'll copy and paste those. This makes it really fast. And it's going to be um, main.cpp. We are going to have uh, process tools.h. And the reason I'm calling it process tools is because process.h uh, is already part of the uh, Windows SDK. So we don't want to have uh, a problem with the naming there. So process tools.cpp uh, for the source file. We are going to do uh, memhack.h, uh, memhack.cpp. We are going to do uh, pattern scan. And then pattern scan.h. All right, so now this makes it nice and easy for us. Um, we will sort by type. We'll grab the CPPs, we'll drag them into the source folder, we'll grab the .hs and put them into the header folder. And then let's go and open the main source file here. Now, the most important thing we're going to do in every header file, of course, is a hashtag include uh, windows.h. We're going to include our other header files as well. We are going to include, uh, in quotations, process.h. Pattern scan.h and a hashtag include 
mhack.h. My typing is terrible, I apologize about that. Important thing to note here, if you don't know it, is that these um, greater than and less than brackets, those tell the compiler to search in the uh, Visual Studio library folder and in your Windows SDK folder if you have that. Those are all part of the uh, environment variables for Visual Studio. And then anytime you're including a file using quotation marks, that means to check the local uh, project folder. So of course, we're going to have our int main, which is going to be an entry point for this uh, dynamic uh, for this executable file and let's talk about what we what we need uh, to make this hack so we made the hack and cheat engine so how did we do that we uh, we knopped uh, five bytes that's what we ended up doing we knopped two instructions which came out to be five bytes uh, we just need to convert that to C++ right so in order to uh, write a knop we need an op the opcode for a knop now, the opcode for a NOP is uh, 0x90. So we want to write those NOPs to this process. So how do we do that? Well, we use write process memory. And so I'm just going to show you, like, the theory behind uh, making these hacks. You know, it's really simple. Just if you want to do something, Google it, and you will find your answer. I guarantee it. And uh, so if we Googled, you know, how to change the memory of an external process, we would, uh, someone would tell us to use the write process memory function. So then we would go to MSDN and we would do write process memory. And we see um, the write process memory and all the uh, arguments here. So we see one of the arguments it needs is hack process. So in order to use this, we need, I'm um, sorry, H process. We, and then we go down here, and it's a handle to the process of memory. So how do we get the handle to a process? Well, I would then Google that, and Google would tell me that I would use the open process function. So then we're going to check out open process, and we're going to see that uh, open process requires a D word process ID. And then we'll go and look at the argument, the identifier of the local process to be opened. So the reason, um, sorry, uh, the identifier of the local process to be opened. So then you would Google how to find a process ID. And Google's going to tell you that you need to uh, use the tool help 32 snapshot function uh, to walk all of the processes currently loaded in Windows and find your process somehow and uh, and inside that structure is going to be a DW process ID um, variable. So then we're going to look up that function tool help 32 snapshot. All right, it's called create tool help 32 snapshot. And then we go here and it takes a some flags and then a process ID. So if we look at the process ID, which is the second argument, it says um, it's the process identifier of the process to be included in the snapshot. It goes on to tell you that this is optional and only required if you are trying to enumerate the modules that are inside of a process. And we're not trying to do that. We want to do it later, but not quite yet. We just want to enumerate the processes in the system. So MSDN is telling us everything we, we need to know. So if you are not using MSDN and Google religiously, then you are not going to become a hacker, let me tell you. So um, this function, uh, you then enumerate through the, snap, through the processes in the snapshot using process32 first. And it takes an input and handles the snapshot and an output, uh, which is LP process 32 entry. So that's what it's going to give us, um, which actually we can just click right here. Process entry 32 structure. So here's the structure. We have size and look at right here, the process ID. So now that's everything we need in order to call write process memory. So now let's stub out some functions that are going to allow us to do all of this, or, or at least some code um, in our int main. So we need to get the process ID, right? And we're going to do that by walking, um, by enumerating the processes using uh, tool help 32 snapshot. And then we are going to um, uh, get a handle by using open process. And then we can do our pattern scan, right? And after we do our pattern scan, we are going to knop the instructions.
So that's what we're going to do. That is the uh, essence of this hack. It's going to do four things, and we are going to write many functions to make those four things easy. So let's go. The first thing we need to do is get process ID, right? So let's open our process tools header file and work on that. So we're going to uh, first in all header files, you want to do uh, pound sign pragma once. And what that does is remember, you used to be able to make these header guards like if defined, do this, if not defined, then define it. Well, uh, pragma once is much easier to use. Uh, it's just one line of code and it tells the compiler if you have already included this file do not include it again and that makes it so that your compiler doesn't get confused when it's trying to come when it's trying to resolve um, external functions um, multiple times to the same function and gets confused and won't let you compile uh, hashtag pragma once that's going to be in all our header files and I actually believe that that auto populates uh, in certain versions of Visual Studio so, um, as always we're going to hashtag include uh, windows.h in all of our header files because we need to interact with the Windows API functions and we need to use variables that are defined as Windows variables certain type defs and other structures as well and if you're ever curious you know about what's you know why are we including this you can right click it and open the document and you can see um, everything that's in here now this files uh, the windows to H is kind of small and the reason for that is because it's basically just a wrapper to um, to include other header files based on what compiler flags and what version of Windows you're using and that kind of thing so let's go back to what we we're doing uh, process tools dot H and remember, we're going to use the tool help 32 snapshot function, so we need to hashtag include tool help 32 uh, dot h. And we are going to write a function that gets the process ID from an executable name uh, using tool help 32 snapshot. Now, Previously in Fleet Tutorials, you saw that he was probably getting the process ID by the name of the window, and that's fine, but I think that using the executable name is just cleaner and easier. Certain um, processes may not have a window or a window name, or uh, that window name could be the same across many uh, different windows. So this function is going to be uh, dword get proc. ID and the argument is going to be a wide char underscore T pointer uh, exe name and our second function is going to uh, get a module entry which is a structure for a, from a module name using tool help 32 snapshot and it's going to be module entry 32 get module and the arguments are going to be d, d word dw proc id w char underscore t pointer module name so you might um my typing is terrible um yeah it really is wow so so we have our process.h two functions that's the beginning of it now i like to just copy these and then go to the source file process tools .cpp. first thing you do in every uh, source file is to hashtag include the header file right and then I'm going to paste those in and then we are going to remove these semicolons and we are going to create some function bodies we're going to do process entry 32 proc entry equals uh we're going to initialize it to zero like that so next piece we're going to do um handle h snapshot equals create tool help 32 snapshot and the arguments are going to be th32 cs underscore snap process and null uh create tool we're on an l there so there we go next one is going to be if not h snapshot return zero then uh, proc entry dot dw size equals size of 
proc entry. Then if not process 32 first arguments of each snapshot address of proc entry uh, return zero also. And then we're going to do a do while loop. So do um, if not wide character string compare uh, proc entry dot sc exe exe file exe name. And in this if statement, we are going to do close handle h snapshot and then return proc entry dot th thirty two process ID, close the if statement, and then we're going to close the do and add the while uh, here. So while process 32 next, h snapshot, address of proc entry, just like that, looks pretty good, minus my terrible typing. Maybe that's why I spend so much time debugging, huh? Uh, yeah, really. Size of proc entry, forgot to capitalize the E, looking good, H snapshot is there, and there. So, after that, we're going to close the handle to H snapshot, and then we're going to return zero. So let me explain how this works. So, um, we are going to create a process entry 32, go to, go to definition, process entry 32w, go to definition, and then we're going to see it's uh, defined right here with our process ID. So that's what that is. So we are going to call create he uh, tool help 32 snapshot. Uh, we'll pick the definition here. It takes flags and it takes process ID. This flag returns all the processes loaded by the operating system. Then if the snapshot is, uh, is not true then return zero so if it if this failed and no snapshot was found we're going to return zero if um and then this piece right here proc entry dw size size of proc entry now you have to initialize um all the variables of proc entry and you need to uh, and you need to initialize the correct size in order for process 32 first to work so then um process 32 first is going to take us the the hands the snapshot and it's going to output into the address of proc entry. So it's going to look up that snapshot. It's going to grab the first entry in the snapshot, and it's going to store it into into proc entry. So if that succeeds, it will continue. If it does not succeed, then we're going to then we're going to just return zero. The the whole function has failed. So then we have a do while loop here, and. The, do, the reason why I have a do while loop is this depends on this while process 32 next. So process 32 next grabs the next uh, process in the snapshot. Um, and so for each process in the snapshot, it's going to do a wide character string compare against our executable name and the executable um, file. So here's where you might be asking, you know, why are we doing a wide character string compare? And that's because if you go to a uh, proc entry, I'm sorry, if you go to, if you cl right click on size SC executable file name uh, and go to peak definition, you're going to see that's defined as a, a wide char. And the reason it's defined as a wide char is there are, there's a if in def um, idiom in here that basically checks if your project is set to Unicode, use wide character. If it's set, if it's not set to Unicode, um, then use uh, char arrays. So in this if statement, we're doing a compare. We are we're doing a wide character string compare, which it's going to compare the executable name we provided against the um, the string that represents the executable file name in the proc entry. So let's just briefly go look up string compare. Uh, string compare. Uh, it returns an int and returns zero if the strings are identical. Not means zero, right? It's checking if the condition is zero. 
So if the, if the result of string compare is zero, then close the handle of snapshot, right? Uh, we've created, when you, t when you uh, create a handle to something, that handle exists in the kernel, and when you use that handle, you're using it in a system call. It's reaching into the kernel, and it's saying, you know, I want access to this process. It looks, looks it up in some sort of handle table, finds the handle, and, you know, checks the access rights that you've been given. Now, you, so it's good coding practice to release that handle, because if you don't release that handle, uh, potentially it's going to exist in the kernel forever. Um, but I do believe in modern operating systems that that handle is closed automatically. If anyone knows, please uh, comment below and let me know. So we close the handle and then we are going to return the proc entry uh, process ID because we found the correct process and we're going to return the process ID. So while uh, we already talked about that, and then if all of this fails and the process has not been found, we still need to close the handle and return zero. So the next function, uh, get module entry, um, we are going to do it like this. Module entry 32 mod entry. And this is very similar. It's going to use the same, um, the same basic idea. We need to initialize module entry 32. And... We are going to do handle h snapshot equals create tool help 32 snapshot. But this time for the flags, we are going to send in uh, th32cs underscore snap module. And we're going to or it with a th32cs underscore snap module 32. So uh, snap module is going to represent all the 64-bit modules, and snap module 32, all the 32-bit modules. Uh, and then the third argument, we are going to supply the DW process ID of uh, our process, because we only want to enumerate the, the modules inside our process. Starting over, so if h snap shot does not equal invalid handle value we are going to do mod entry dot dw size equals size of module entry 32 and then if module 32 first each snapshot address of mod entry we are going to do a do while loop with an if statement in it, if wide character string compare mod entry dot sc module module name, uh, and we're going to not that just like the previous function, and in this if statement we're just going to break, and then we're going to close out our do while statement with while module 32 next h snapshot uh, address of mod entry and then close handle h snapshot close that and then we're going to return mod entry so how does that look uh, it seemed to have a mistake here because we need one more closing parentheses and there it is so very similar to the above function it's going to initialize the mod entry, it's going to grab the snapshot, it's going to make sure the snapshot is good, and then it's going to populate the size variable, it's going to grab the first module, it's going to compare our provided module name against uh, each module in the module snapshot, and when it's found, it's going to break, and it's going to close the handle of the snapshot and free that, um, that piece of memory, and then it's going to return uh, the correct um, mod entry. Alright, so the next header file we're going to go to, we are going to start writing our pattern scan uh, functions. Go to patternscan.h, and of course, we're going to hashtag pacma once, we're going to hashtag include windows.h, we are going to hashtag include uh, tool help 32.h, and hashtag include um, process tools 
h because these functions are going to uh, then call our functions that are in process tools. So first thing we're going to have is a internal pattern scan function and this is going to be uh, just like uh, fleeps uh, with a, some few uh, alterations. We are going to have this be a void pointer pattern pattern scan uh, and it's going to take a char uh, pointer base a size underscore t size a char pointer pattern and a char pointer mask then we are going to write an external wrapper around that internal pattern scan function. Yeah, so uh, what's going to be nice about this, you're going to have an internal pattern scan function that works for internal hacks, and then just a simple wrapper around it that's going to work for your external. That way you don't have uh, redundant code for both. So void pointer pattern scan ex, and it's going to take the arguments of handle h process u in pointer underscore t begin u in pointer underscore t end and char pointer pattern um, and char pointer mask then what we're going to create then is a module wrapper for the external pattern scan function and so what that's going to do is it's going to read you're going to give it the name of a module inside the process. It's going to find that module and it's going to scan only that module. That way, you know, I think in in the source engine games, there's like, uh, you know, client.dll and server.dll, and obviously you don't need to be scanning for values uh, in the server uh, or that kind of thing. So why waste your time scanning an entire process when you only need to scan one module and for the most part when you get a pointer that pointer you're gonna know this pointer exists in a certain module the, the developer is not going to uh, next month all of a sudden put the local client pointer in server.dll you know that's not it's not what they do so this is going to be void pattern scan ex module uh, handle h process and then we're going to do a y char underscore t pointer uh, module, a char pointer pattern, a char pointer mask. So uh, I just need to change some of my typos here. And we are looking good. So those are our three functions. And so pattern scan ex module is going to wrap around this and this is going to wrap around that so let's open pattern scan source file and again we need to include the header file hashtag include uh, pattern scan dot h and then paste those boy bad boys in and we are going to add some function bodies to these and populate them in a second So the in internal pattern scan function, this one will be the most complicated. Let's dive right in. We are going to do size underscore t uh, pattern length equals string length of pattern, and then we are going to do for a for loop uh, for <coughs> unsigned int i equals zero. Uh, i is less than size minus pattern length and then i plus plus and bool found equals true and then another for loop uh, unsigned int j equals zero j is less than pattern uh, length and j plus plus so in this for loop, we are going to have uh, if mask element j does not equal uh, the question mark <coughs> and pattern element j does not equal the value pointed to by uh, base plus i plus j. If 
found equals false, and then break. Close that if statement. Uh, close that for loop. And then if found, we want to return. Uh, we're going to typecast to avoid pointer um, the value of base plus i. And then we're going to close that as well. And then we're going to return null pointer. So this is going to be the most complicated function here. Um, so we need to make sure that we get this perfectly. It will be difficult for me to explain. And also, you'll see that this is very similar to Fleep's function um, because basically, there's you know, there's only one way to, to do this. Would for each element in the pattern, for each byte, we are going to iterate over each element in the mask, and we are going to compare um, the mask. If it's a wild card, we just want to skip over it, right? And we want to break. And also, if the pattern does not match the uh, the memory in the buffer that we're comparing it to, then we know that the pattern was not found. We want to break out of this individual loop, and we just want to continue into our main loop here. And so if your wildcard doesn't, if it doesn't, Sorry, if it is if it doesn't match wildcard and it doesn't match the pattern, uh, fa if we didn't find the pattern and we're gonna break. If you didn't break, you would then to every element in the mask, and that's just not uh, efficient at all um, because we know it's not found. We don't need to check the rest of the pattern, so we want to put that break. So so found will only get set to false if there is. Uh, if the pattern does not match and it's not a wild card. So if this loop is all finished and found is still true, then we know we found our pattern. So if it if found is true, then we're going to turn the address of uh, a pointer to base plus i. So base will be um, the base address of the memory that we are scanning. And then i is going to be the offset into that um, array where we found the pattern. And if not, we're going to return null pointer. So return null pointer. Null pointer is a, a thing in C++ that's going to let you um, basically invalidate a pointer. In the old days, you would set the pointer to equal null, right? And null would resolve to zero, of course. And so what if your pointer pointed to address zero, for example, and you were going to do, um, let's do it here, void pointer x equals null, which is zero, and then later down the road, you do something like this, if not x. Well, that's not going to resolve exactly how you want it to because it's going to say um, this is going to resolve to true but because x is 0, but we didn't want, um, but x is correct. We wanted x to point to address 0, right? So in the case of you want it to point at address 0, x 0, this doesn't cooperate with you. So for that reason, you use null pointer, and then you do like this. Um, if x does not equal null pointer. So now you have a way of checking um, that null pointer is null pointer because null pointer cannot be something else null pointer is null pointer I, that's not how i should say it no other value can be null pointer null pointer is itself and nothing else can be it so when you do a comparison null pointer always resolves uh, to null pointer so that's all set all right so let's go down to our external wrapper here and we'll code that out. So u in pointer underscore t current chunk equals begin. And then we have size uh, size underscore t bytes red. And that size t is all in caps. And then we're going to do a while current chunk is less than end. Then we will do char buffer uh, with 4,096 4, elements. 
uh, D word old protect and then virtual protect ex h process void pointer current chunk size of buffer oops size of buffer and process all access address of old protect and then we're going to do a read process memory with the arguments of h process and void pointer current chunk address of buffer size of buffer and then address of bytes read then we're going to do if bytes read equals equals uh, zero then we want to return null pointer and then void pointer internal address equals pattern scan char pointer address of buffer bytes read and then pattern and then mask and then another if statement if internal address does not equal null pointer then u in pointer underscore t offset from buffer equals type cast u in pointer underscore t uh, internal address minus u in pointer underscore t uh, address of buffer and then we're going to return type cast to a void pointer um, the sum of current chunk plus offset from buffer and else we are going to do current chunk equals current chunk plus bytes red close that statement close the next one and then we are going to return null pointer and close that and we did that so like always I have some each process is undefined because I wrote it wrong up there bytes read looks good because I forgot the S up there and then H should not be capitalized and And here. Man, I'm fucking terrible, huh? Holy shit. <laughs> That's hysterical. Okay, so that was the worst function I've ever written. So let me explain how this works. So we have u in pointer current chunk equals begin. And well, while current chunk is less than end. And then down here, we're increasing current chunk. So we are progressing through the, the memory of the external process, and we're grabbing chunks. And we're doing that by creating a buffer of 4,096 4, bytes, which is 4 kilobytes. Now, the reason we're doing that is, um, conveniently, 4 kilobytes is the default size of a page of memory in Windows. We're going to read entire pages of memory rather than reading one byte of a at a time. And the reason for this, we all know, is that external hacks are slow because every time you want to interact with an external process, you have to call into the kernel and say, you know, please may I do this? And the kernel says, no, but I'll do it for you. And the kernel then reaches into the external process, sends it back to the kernel, and then the kernel sends it to you. So that's a lot of overhead just to read one byte. And so we're going to try to eliminate that overhead by reading entire pages at a time. We may not have, uh, we don't have access to that, so we have to call virtual protect ex, which all that is is an external version of virtual protect that takes a handle to the process. And we are going to do process all access. I believe we can also just do process uh, VM read. Read. Yeah, that's correct. So we can just do that too. So we can just read the memory and that will be a little bit nicer. And we store the old protection. And then when we're all done, 
we should be restoring it, shouldn't we? Thing. Copy it. Current chunk. Size of buffer. We'll protect. And no. So that's going to restore the protections that we um, that we changed over here. And then if bytes read equals zero. So when read process memory reads that uh, address space, it's going to store the number of bytes that were read into this value, which is optional. You can just set it to null, and that's what you generally do. But in this case, it has a use for us. If, per, if for some reason uh, read process memory uh, ends up not being able to read all the bytes for some sort of permission access or something like that, it's going to uh, return less bytes. And let's say you read all the bytes that you could, you, be, you got to the end of the process, the end of the, um, the page where you were given access, then if bytes read equals zero, we're just going to return null pointer uh, and we're done. And you know what? I forgot to close that right there. So if bytes read equals zero, we're going to return null pointer. And then uh, we need to reformat that. So void pointer internal address equals the result from pattern scan. So if pattern scan finds our pattern, it's going to return a pointer to it. If not, internal address is going to be set to null pointer, remember. So if internal address does not equal null pointer, meaning the pattern was found, then we are going to here, we are going to um, calculate from uh, internal to external. It's going to convert our internal address of the pattern to the external by subtracting the, the internal address, uh, sorry, subtracting the address of the buffer minus the internal address and then returning a pointer to um, our current chunk plus the offset from the chunk. And otherwise, if internal, if the pattern is not found down here, else we are going to advance to the next chunk um, by adding the current chunk to the uh, bytes that were read. And then if all else fails, we were returning null pointer, the pattern was not found. Now, now you might be asking yourself, what's with this U in pointer stuff? And the reason for the U in pointer is because we want to make this um, this code agnostic to platform, uh, meaning it doesn't care if it's 64-bit or 32-bit uh, process. So later when you go and you start hacking 64-bit games, you won't have to rewrite your code. So it's a good coding practice. Get into this now rather than later is uh, use U int pointer T instead of D word. Because if we look at a D word, we can see that it's an unsigned long, which is a 32-bit variable. So addresses in 32-bit are obviously 32-bit and addresses in 64-bit are 64-bit. So if we go to a peak definition for U int pointer, we see this uh, if defined win64, then U int pointer is type def to a, to a 64-bit integer. Otherwise, it's going to be type def to just a regular unsigned int. So in this manner, in this manner it works um, for 64-bit and 32-bit um, without any problem. All right, so that's done. Now we have our pattern scan external module wrapper. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to do D word process ID equals get proc ID uh, module name and then module entry 32 mod entry equals get module process ID module name and then you in pointer uh, begin equals uh, typecasting to u in pointer underscore t mod entry dot mod base address and then u in pointer underscore t end equals begin plus mod entry dot mod base size then next we have return pattern scan ex with the arguments of h process and begin and end and pattern and mask. So we're just passing the arguments along to the next function. And uh, so module, I wrote that wrong. So we're going to get process ID of a based on a module name that we provided. 
and we're going to store it into process ID. So I did make a small um, error in this code. We want to change it to wchar underscore t. Uh, basically, we're going to add another variable in here, another argument. So uh, ychar array uh, named uh, exe name. And now we need to go back into our pattern and we need to just update that. So we are going to change this to exe name. So we're going to get the process ID from the executable name. We are going to get the module based on module name, and we're going to store it in mod entry. And then we are going to um, see module entry is just like uh, is just like the process entry. So if we follow that down the chain here, we see uh, here's the module name. Uh, module ID, process ID, all that good stuff. So get the module and then we're going to take the base address and we're going to put it in begin and we're going to get the we're going to take the begin address plus the size and that's going to be the end. So that's the full range of that module in memory. We're going to scan that entire memory range. And then so we're going to return the value returned by this. By we're just going to pass all that information along to the prop to the function we already wrote. So now we need to write our nopping function. So let's go to memhack.h, and uh, we hashtag pragma once. We are going to hashtag include windows.h. And then we're going to write a few different things here. Um, I'm going to give you four functions. Uh, we only need one for this, but I thought it would be nice just to show you four. So we are going to have an internal patch function, and we're going to call it void patch. Uh, with the arguments void pointer uh, destination, void pointer source, and it's going to take an unsigned int, name size, and then we are going to have an external function, and we're going to call this void patch ex, and it's going to take a handle named h process, a void pointer named destination, a void pointer named source, and an unsigned int size, and then we are going to have an internal nop function and that's going to be called void nop and it's going to take the arguments handle h process void pointer destination unsigned int size and then we are going to have an external version of nop and that's going to be called void nop x and that's going to take handle h process void pointer destination unsigned int size again that's looking good, and I spelled that wrong. And so we are going to, again, like always, copy those into our memhack.source file. First, we are going to hashtag include the memhack header file, and then we're going to paste those in and add some bodies. All right, so void patch, we are going to do d word old protect. We're going to do oops, virtual protect uh, DST size and then page underscore read write and address of old protect. And then we are going to do mem copy destination source size and then virtual protect. Uh, destination size old protect and then address of old protect. All right, looking good. So we're going to give us give us uh, access rights to read and write to that address of memory. Even though we're internal, uh, the internal process does not have the uh, may not have the access rights to then write to that page of memory. Remember, these permissions are set per page not per process. So now we have uh, memory mem copy from source to destination and then we're going to restore the old protections. Now when we're doing this um, externally it's basically going to be the same thing except instead of mem copy we're going to do write process memory h process uh, destination source size and then null the optional um, argument there and we are going to use virtual protect 
uh, EX, which is the external version. And the first argument in that is going to be the H process because we can't access, we can't tell the kernel what process we want to fuck with until we until we have a handle to it. Correct? All right. So down here in internal mop, basically it's going to be the same thing as patch, except instead of uh, writing an array, it's going to write the same byte over and over again. So we're going to do memset, and we, the source is just going to be 0x90. Now 0x90 uh, represents the instruction of NOP, which is no operation. And so that's actually all set. What we're going to do here is byte pointer uh, NOP array equals new byte, whoops, new byte with the size of size. And we are going to mem set the NOP array to 0x90. And then we're basically going to use this NOP here. We're going to put it down here. We are going to convert the virtual protect calls to uh, virtual protect external calls um, by doing this. And then the mem set can no longer be mem set. It's going to be write process memory, uh, h process, dst, uh, nop array, size, and null. We've created a new byte array. We've allocated a new space in memory for a nop array with the size we've given it, and we've assigned a pointer to it called nop array. Then we're going to set uh, all the elements to nop array to 0x90. Now we can't forget, we need to do uh, delete op array to get to uh, free that memory, otherwise we're going to have memory leak. So now in our in int main, we are going to do uh, d word process id equals git proc id um, ac client.exe. Now here's something uh, that's important that I want to show you. Now, uh, it's not letting us do that because it says the argument of type uh, char pointer, sorry, char array is incompatible with parameter of a wide char array. All right, so let's typecast it, right? That's what we do, wide char pointer, right? All right, so you think you would do that, but unfortunately that does not work. You cannot do that. What you need to do is put the L in front of it. And I'll just explain to you that uh, anytime you have a string in quotations like that, that's called a string literal. And when you have an L in front of it, that tells the compiler to, to store it as a wide char array. If you don't have the L on it, it's going to store it as a regular char array. Okay. Now, in the early development of Windows, uh, there was there was many different ways to represent strings and characters. There, there was ASCII, ANSI, Unicode, and multibyte, and uh, all of it's actually very confusing. But what you need to know is that multibyte is considered legacy. It's no longer recommended, and that is why if you right-click on your project and you go to properties you'll see character set right here and use Unicode character set is the default option and that's because um, that's what everyone's recommending. You can set it to multi character set but there's no reason to. Um, previously in fleet tutorials everyone was confused why their projects wouldn't compile so moving forward in the tutorials we are not going to be setting multi character set we're going to be using Unicode. You might be wondering you know why is Unicode the accepted uh, character set right now and that's because Unicode uses wide characters. What a wide character is, it's a two byte uh, data type. This two byte data type can represent over 65,000 different characters. Now char is one byte and it can only represent uh, about 255 different characters. So char is fine for the English language, but if you go to other countries in Asia, uh, there's over 10,000 different characters in their language. So, so a char doesn't work. So the idea of Unicode was to have one uh, character set 
that could include every single language at one time. You have one code for all of them. That's why it's called Unicode, and that's why that's what everyone's using now. The L is a macro. I used to think it was a Windows SDK macro, but it's actually part of the C++ 2003 implementation. Um, now, the next question you're going to be asking me is, well, then how come... How come all the video games we play don't use wide char arrays? They're all using just regular char arrays. And that's because if the game's in English, then it doesn't need a wide char. It can just use it uh, just char, so that's what people are used to using. Properties, and it's set to Unicode. Basically what that means is it's giving a preprocessor directive of uh, hashtag define uh, Unicode, uh, underscore Unicode. Whoops, underscore Unicode. And then if you set it to multiply character set, it's basically going to hashtag define underscore uh, MBCS. That, so that's what those two things do. Typecasting like this, wchar underscore T pointer, does not work. You need to write a function to convert it. And rather than giving you a fancy function to convert, we are just going to use the L macro, and it's going to make the next line where you're going to get a handle of process. So we're going to do handle H process equals uh, open open process and process all access false process ID void pointer health uh, decrease address equals pattern scan ex module h process and we are going to feed in a ac client exe string literal and we are going to put an l in front of it and we're actually going to do that twice because one is the name of the process one is the module name and then here we are we need our char pattern so let's go grab that here's our pattern throw that in and then the next argument is going to be the mask and so there's our mask, and we are going to throw these in as string literals. Um, and using this format, the slash x tells um, tells it that it's the literal byte 29, the literal byte 7b, and not to convert from you know char 29 to um, the byte that represents that character. That's what that slash X does. And so that's looking good. And then we need to nop the instructions. So we're going to use nop X, H process, health decrease address, and the size of five. Remember, that was the size, the number of nops you wanted to add in. And then anytime we are done uh, with int main, we are going to return zero. So this might look silly here, where the XQL name and the module name are the same, but in reality, you would be in a situation where you would be doing, um, you know, server.dll to, to only check that module. Just to put that in perspective. We're looking good here. Let's fire it up. All right, so let's open a salt cube, and we will see if this hack works. So let's put a breakpoint right here, and let's launch the debugger. And we are going to step over get proc ID, and we see get process ID returned uh, 1DC0, so it got the process ID. Uh, open process uh, returned a handle, uh, hex 30, which is good. And then we step over get pattern scan ex module, and pattern scan returned the correct address, so that's looking beautiful. Now, if we. Uh, if we put cheat engine over here, we can actually see it in action. So we have our bytes here, right? And so now let's step over, and now we see we have one, two, three, four, five knops were put in. So the hack works. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Might expand on this actually, but definitely be looking forward to part two of Solar's tutorial. And then uh, I have a huge project, which is my framework that I'll be showing you guys uh, shortly as well. So thanks for watching.